Hello and welcome to the 8th round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at the Chicago Twin Speedway in Chicago, Illinois. Now, looking at the starting grid, starting on the pole is Ian Elias in the number 32. On his outside is Brian Gallagher. Both of them missed Mansfield last week, so they're looking for a good rebound here. Ike Durbin, your points leader, starting on the inside of row number 2. Uh, there is John Jefferson and the number 55 car puts it 7th on the grid in his debut with Stefan's Racing. Ben Atkins with a good qualifying effort there on the inside of row number 5. As we go back further through the grid, uh, at, in the truck and lights races which happened in the past two days, both races went into an overtime dash where uh, Andy Lambert won the truck race. He is starting in 6th uh, place for this race and John Francois Davila won the lights race over Justin King, who uh, was the defending winner of that race. Kelly Blackwater there in 26th place is having a very good points day. Welcome to the grid, Matt Brinson. He attempted to qualify that car at Mansfield, but failed to qualify. Uh, we're seeing him for the first time since 2014 here today. Daniel Sharp on the inside of row 16. This is one of his better tracks. He actually out-qualified both of his teammates, who locked out the back row. Tough uh, qualifying effort for Tom Delgado. He has struggled all week in that number three car. Cale Bernfart Jr. slow. Uh, Duncan Cobb had some problems in qualifying, and locking out the last row is Nice Cock Racing with Jerry Mayat and Ramsey Cockner. And with that, the green flag is out, and Ian Elias leads them to the green flag. He pulls out to a decently sized lead already over Brian Gallagher there on the outside. Looks like Ike Durbin is going to move into second place. Ian Elias actually missed Mansfield uh, last week, and he's looking to rebound in what has been... Uh, he has been the weakest link at Paloma Autosport this season, with Lenny Jacobs and Gaspar D'Souza both doing extremely well. So Ian Elias is hoping to reach their level here today. John Jefferson in the number 55 car making his first start. Ashfire Extinguishers on board. He is in fifth place. So very strong showing for John Jefferson right out of the gate. He started in seventh and he's already gone up two positions. He's looking to have a great day here at the Chicago Twin Speedway. Barney Ward blows up on lap number three uh, from 13th place. Tough break for Barney Ward. He missed Mansfield and really has not had a great year. I believe he's 33rd in points coming into this race. So I believe he's going to drop uh, severely from that. Joe Craig has a problem on lap number three as well. He pulls that car off to the side and he is going to get that car serviced. It doesn't look to be terminal though. Oh, we've got a crash in the back. That was Duncan Cobb getting turned into the wall. Caution one out on lap number three. Let's take a look and see what happened. He checks up, hits the wall. Tom Delgado hits him and he collects Greg Woodard. Both cars would go out of the race. Duncan Cobb had worked his way up in points, but Greg Woodard has just had an awful season and it continues to get worse here at Chicago Twin as he just had nowhere to go and piled straight into uh, Duncan Cobb there. As I said before, both cars would drop out of the race. Ben Atkins, who ran into the back of uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer on lap number one, would pit to get that damage repaired. Ian Elias continues to lead after the caution, and uh, this is lap number 11 of 69. Chris Benson's having a fantastic run in this uh, number 20 car. He took over this ride after Candace Bowen was diagnosed with a severe case of sponsoritis. Hopefully she'll get over that soon. But Chris Benson brought some sponsorship money. He is doing well today. He's in 27th place. And right behind him is Matt Brinson, who we're seeing for the first time this season and for the first time since 2014. And he is running right behind him in 28th place. That is a 1998 Chevy Monte Carlo that he brought to the track. And he's outperforming his machinery. He is in 28th place, and Daniel Sharp is actually having a great run here, too. This is one of his better tracks. He's in 29th. Uh, Tom Delgado brings his car into the pits to get some damage repaired. He has had a miserable day here today, and uh, he'll get that repaired. James Hewitt has some problems on lap number, uh, I believe this is lap number 14 from 17th place, and he is going to go out of the race early on. You're second in points. Drops out very early, and I believe he would finish uh, 40th or so. So uh, Ike Durbin stands to gain quite a bit here. He is running in second place and really doing all that he can to keep himself up in the points. Uh, if he keeps himself there, he is going to open up 
a massive lead over uh, the rest of the field, and he has just been in a class of his own all year, seemingly. Uh, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer is also a dark horse in the championship, believe it or not. He is in ninth place on lap number 19. He's doing really just a great job. He's taken like a fish to water on these uh, speedways, and uh, Preston Bell behind him is having a really good run, too. He hasn't shown a lot of speed. Actually, all the cars around him, Louis Ballard, Mark Burt, Preston Bell, all missed Mansfield last week, and they're looking for a good point stay here today. Uh, speaking of Mansfield, Mansfield hero Jerry Myatt goes a lap down on lap number 20, so he's uh, off the pace as usual. He's actually being a very nice back marker and staying out of the way of everyone, and uh, his teammate Ramsey Cockner would go a lap down the lap later. Uh, looks like the trend of nice cock racing being slow on speedways is continuing. Alex Phillips, top 10 in points, brings his car into the pits on lap number 21 from 23rd place. He had a tire go down. Lenny Jacobs running the Linux colors this week, right in front of John Jefferson there in 4th place, and Andy Lambert's in 6th, so these cars are about uh, 4 or 5 seconds back from the leaders, and they're having a good run, but it looks like they're going to stay out of contention. Kelly Blackwater, another car in the top 10 in points, having issues here today. She brings her car into the pits on lap number 27 from 24th. Kyuga Hakai is having a pretty good run here. He uh, is the weakest of the rookie class right now, if I'm not mistaken. He is way down in points. He's having a good top 15 run. He's in 15th place right now. And uh, the 2014 series champion, Lenina Lazareva, has had an awful season. She's right behind him in 16th place. So both of these cars looking for great runs here today and they're desperately in need of them. Kyuga Hakai has shown flashes of brilliance every once in a while, but hasn't been able to put together a complete run. Hopefully he can do it here today. Lap 29 of 69, and Barbara Burt is slow. Uh, she was having a an okay run. She was up in the top 15, but uh, her team, Double B Motorsports, actually got blanked at Mansfield, and that cost them severely in the team championship, and she's going to stall out in the middle of the track. Look at this, she's slowing down, she's not making a real effort to pull off the track. She parked sideways, but for some reason, despite the leaders going by like that, that's not going to draw a caution. She would get towed to the pits and go four laps down in the process. Uh, Andy Lambert is running in sixth place with hometown uh, sponsor Cicero in that car. He's doing a good job here today, and uh, he's hopefully going to gain some ground in the points. He's uh, about midfield in the points at this point, despite having a few good runs throughout the season. Uh, Dan Foray and Kurt Pliskin are the remaining two Accelerator Motorsports cars, and they're about to go a lap down. They're both running awfully here today. Accelerator Motorsports has just been terrible uh, at this track this year, and I uh, believe they were very good here last year, which is very strange. Uh, Accelerator Motorsports is having an awful day. They're getting beaten by Zach Tech Motorsports team which should tell you enough right there. Ike Durbin making a move for the lead on the outside. Kurt Pliskin is all over the place. Uh, oh, we've got a caution, it looks like. Um, gonna take a look and see what that's from, but look at here. Ike Durbin's making a power move on the outside. There's some smoke coming on that turn there, and uh, Ike Durbin's gonna take the lead coming to the caution, as it looks like Scott Wollen drifted up the track and just got hooked into the wall by Alex Phillips. Um, Phillips, you're a lapped car. I'm not sure why you're wrecking cars on the lead lap. That was, uh, he was in 17th place, so he was having a pretty good run. Uh, in the pits, looks like that good run for Elena Lazareva is not going to continue as she stalls her car in the pits after running into the back of Scott Wollen. And a number of cars are actually going to have issues getting out of their pits. Barry Juvenal there, uh, Lewis Jones, Kyuga Hakai, Scott Wollen. All of these cars are having various fuel or suspension or engine or oil problems, and they're all. I, for some reason, they're all uh, in adjacent pit stalls, uh, but all of them would go two laps down under that pit cycle as they try to fit, uh, as they try to fix their cars. Daniel Sharp. Uh, gas and goad on that last pit stop, and he made it up to third place, so uh, Daniel Sharp rolling the dice at one of his best tracks. He uh, actually qualified here in the 0-2 car, 
back in 2012, so he has some experience here, and oh, looks like we've got a couple cars bouncing into the wall, but Daniel Sharp continuing to hold on up at the front of the field, and we've got a caution. It looks like Mark Burke gets turned into the wall by Preston Bell. Caution three on lap number 38. He collects uh, Josh Marshall there, and Kyuga Hakai has nowhere to go, and he's going to go out of the race. Uh, Kyuga, Kyuga Hakai had gone a couple laps down, and remember what I said about him not being able to complete a race? Uh, that's what I meant. But on the way to, the, to take the caution, Ike Durbin and uh, Ian Elias dive into the pits. I think they're gambling on fuel right now. Uh, it's about that time where you might be able to stretch it to the finish. And uh, top three, that makes it the 49, 55, and 34. Matt Brinson has done a good job here today. He's up in sixth place on lap number 43, so just under 20 laps to go, eh, about 25 laps to go actually, and Chris Benson's having a good run too, he's also up in the top 10, actually all three Zach Tech Motorsports team cars, you can see them right there, they're all up in the top 10 right now, so a fantastic day for ZMT, but looks like we've got another caution immediately after the restart, caution 4 on lap number 43, looks like Tom Delgado hooked Dan Foray, Ben Atkins is involved, oh he's going to wash up the track, that's a uh, bunch of cars involved, looks like... Uh, that's Alina Lazareva, whose day has gone just from bad to worse. Uh, uh, Alex Phillips is in it. Tom Wilson is involved. There's, yeah, wow. It's the big one here at Chicago Twin. And that's going to take Tom Wilson out right there. Nicholas Cordovos is in it. We're going to go on board with him. And uh, Cordovos was really hoping for a good run to regain some points after Mansfield. But he gets taken out right there. He loses the right front quarter panel, and he's going to go out of the race. And going on board with Tom Delgado, looked like... What was Dan Foray doing? Uh, he just swerved into the wall, and it looked like a tire might have gone down. Louis Ballard, unfortunately, he was running in the top 10 at this point, but he's going to go out of the race with mechanical issues coming to take the restart. So, Manticore Engineering, uh, one car had an awful day. This car was doing fairly well, but is going to go out of the race. Joe Craig is up in the top 10. This is his best run of the season. He is uh, in sixth place with about 20 laps to go here. Uh, Joe Craig was a uh, staple at Raptor Racing, which became Petrol Tech Engineering, which is now in the light series. So when he was not retained, he got a, he got a ride with Lucas Motorsports, and that team is actually facing relegation right now. So he's doing all he can to keep that team up inside of the PCC Cup Series right now. Ike Durbin, Currently running in 14th on lap number 50, under 20 laps to go at this point, and Ian Elias is right behind him in 15th, and these cars are trying to make gains, but unfortunately if this race continues to go green, I doubt that they'll have a chance to get up near the front of the field, as uh, their pit gamble may have uh, uh, not really worked. As here is Chris Benson battling with, I believe that's uh, Ryan Matthews, these cars are in 9th, 11th, and 12th at this point, so Zach Tech Motorsports team is putting on a fantastic showing, and uh, Brinson is punching way above the level of his equipment, running up in the top 10 right now. Akio Gifu is also having a fantastic run. The Japanese driver has uh, really done nothing of note all season, but is putting together a great run. He's up in sixth place right now, uh, trapped behind Cale Bernfart Jr., who is a lapped car and uh, good to see the 466 doing very well. Here are the leaders right now. That's uh, Brian Gallagher, uh, Andy Lambert, looks like John Jefferson, and Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer are the top four, and they're spread way out. Uh, caution lights are on, caution number five on lap 55, just uh, 15 laps from the finish. Oh, Barbara Burt, what are you doing being in the way? And uh, that's gonna give some pretty heavy damage to Ian Elias who's immediately diving for the pits. Ian Elias... Wow. wow. I Did Barbara Burt have a tire go down? Uh, that was bizarre. This was also coming to the caution, as Gaspar D'Souza just turns Kurt Pliskin out of the way. Uh, I guess that's one way of doing it. Uh, not going to make too many friends doing that, but the restart would occur with just 10 laps to go, uh, coming to lap number 59. And Brian Gallagher pulls out to a big lead, 
over uh, Andy Lambert, and it looked like Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer made a move for third place, although fuel may be an issue, as now here is Ike Durbin making his way around Matt Brinson. That's going to put him in the top ten. Sapphire Anderson back there having a good run. Ike Durbin is on the move. He is charging. Crew said he is good on fuel, and it looks like he's going to try and go for it here today as Ben Worthington now in sixth place. On lap number 60, just a few laps to go. He's, uh, him and Joe Craig are doing an awesome job. Although there's Ike Durbin back there lurking. He's going to try and make a move. He's, he is the fastest car on track right now. That two car. As, uh, now this is fifth place. This is Lenny Jacobs, and he is trapped behind Kale Burnfart Jr. He's been trapped behind Burnfart Jr. since the start. Uh, since this restart, and uh, he's already six seconds back, so that's basically written him out of this equation. And he is trying desperately to get around Burnfart Jr., but he cannot do it. He does not have a strong enough car to get around a car that qualified in 35th. I think that speaks for itself. ZMT is running 11th through 13th, this late in the race, lap number 63 of 69. And uh, this is just going to be an incredible point stay for this team. They need it so badly. And it's great to see that they're doing really well. As Ike Durbin's making a move around Lenny Jacobs there on the bottom, trying to make a move for fifth place. But he's going to slot in there next to Ben Worthington. That's going to be a battle for sixth place between the six and the two. And the two is going to take it. The two has the strongest car on track right now. And uh, there's going to be no stopping Ike Durbin uh, unless... Uh, there's a fuel issue, and uh, speaking of a fuel issue, here is Brian Gallagher looking back on Andy Lambert. He, look at all that room he has. He could probably cut back the pace and save it, but for some reason he'll, he's still going full power. Uh, Ike Durbin now passing the 51, doing what I guess Lenny Jacobs couldn't do, and look at that gap that he's already opened up on the rest of the uh, of that second pack. As wow, he's just that's that's incredible <laughs> lap 66 of 69 and four laps to go they weren't kidding Brian Gallagher brings his car into the pits with fuel issues and John Jefferson from fourth place is looks like the leaders are starting to run out of fuel maybe they should have come down into the pits when Ike Durbin and Ian Elias did as now Andy Lambert takes over the lead with just uh, three laps to go lap 67 of 69 and he is reporting fuel problems. He's going to run out, so he brings his car into the pits, and so does Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer. Top four have pit, which means that the lead is going to go to... Hang on, Lenny Jacobs is coming into the pits, too. Let's see, that's Ben Worthington, uh, Chris Benson, Matt Brinson, and Ike Durbin. Ike Durbin is going to take over the lead with just three laps to go as uh, that move to dive for the pits, coming to that caution, that is going to be what saves him enough fuel, and he is going to cruise on home. Sapphire Anderson comes into the pits. Just two laps to go now. That's Ryan Matthews, Preston Bell, and... Uh, wow. Ike Durbin, fuel mileage race. He's going to steal this one here today. As coming through the final turn, Ike Durbin, driver of the number two Shinra uh, Saturn. We've got a car smoking on the apron there. That's Preston Bell. But Ike Durbin is going to take the win here at Chicago. Looking at the results now, Akio Gifu did not pit. Neither did Joe Craig, Gaspar D'Souza, Frank Azzaretto, Ben Atkins, and Daniel Sharp. Those were the cars that made it the distance and didn't come into the pits. Uh, and they were all rewarded with top 10 finishes. Brian Gallagher was the first car to bring his car into the pits. He finished in 7th place. Andy Lambert, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer finishes strong in the top 10. John Jefferson, in his debut with Stephens Racing, just misses out on a top 10. He finishes 11th. Ian Elias, 12th place. Lenny Jacobs is 13th. Worthington, 14th. Good, good points day for Zach Tech Motorsports team. They finished 15th through 17th, despite all making pit stops. Sapphire Anderson was the first car one lap down in 18th. Dan Foray manages to get a top 20 for uh, Accelerator Motorsports. They need that pretty badly. And Preston Bell 
uh, crossed the finish line smoking after being involved in a pit incident coming out of the pits as Ike Durbin was taking the checkered flag. Now looking at driver's points, Ike Durbin continues to hold the points lead over now it's Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer in second place by two points over Gaspar D'Souza. In third, Lenny Jacobs is fourth. Brian Gallagher improves back up to fifth after missing Mansfield. Kelly Blackwater continues to sit sixth tied with Alex Phillips there. Uh, Blackwater gets the tiebreaker on laps completed. John Jefferson moves up to eighth place, passing James Hewitt, who had an awful day. He was second in points coming into this race, if you remember. Tom Delgado is tenth after having a miserable race. Uh, Nicholas Cordovo is 11th, Andy Lambert moves up to 12th place, Mark Burt 13th, Sapphire Anderson had a good run in f uh, and f is 14th in points, Duncan Cobb drops to 15th, Ian Elias 16th, Ben Atkins is up in the top 20 for the first time all season if I'm not mistaken, Preston Bell tied with him for 18th or for 17th in 18th place, Jerry Myatt and Daniel Sharp round out the top 20, both cars for nice cock racing, they're facing relegation here pretty soon or they're very close to it. Taking a look at the team standings now, Paloma Autosport and Manicore Engineering, it's a dogfight at the top of the standings between the top two, but it's over 100 points back to third place Team Ben Atkins. It's a dogfight from third all the way down to 10th place seemingly, as only 47 points separate third to 10th. And Stefan's Racing is just barely holding a gap over the three relegate, or two of the three relegation teams, Lucas Motorsports and Zach Tech Motorsports team who are the first two teams out, and Accelerator Motorsports, as I mentioned before, had an awful day, and uh, they really have not gained much after being blanked at Mansfield, and they're sitting well in the relegation zone.